So what I'm going to start out with here is, is basically kind of a, a spreadsheet approach. This is for setting sales targets. And what I've got here is an Excel pivot table um, that shows the roll up all the way up to the, the organizational top, um, you know, grand total. And then the breakdown by region, by country, and then by district. Um, I filtered on fiscal year 2008 and then broken out by quarter. And this pivot table um, comes from analysis services, uh, comes from my, my data mark underneath. And it's very straightforward to create one. If I come over, So what I've done here is connected to my data mart on the back end, and I can filter this down to financial reporting, um, sales, orders, or in this case what I want to look at is sales targets. And very straightforward to simply drag and drop business terms that I'm familiar with. Um, quota, if I want to drill down by fiscal year, or in this case filter by fiscal year. and then do a breakout by quarter. And then I can also break down by territory. So very straightforward to take a look at what my sales targets are across the organization again. And so with this breakdown, now remember that this is simply a front end. All this data is stored on the server. However, what I can do is I can take this Excel spreadsheet and I can store it in SharePoint. So by creating a document library in SharePoint, I have a web-based front end that I can publish these uh, Excel spreadsheets into. And the, the, the nice thing is that once I've got this parked in SharePoint, then I also have um, permissions. I, can, I have version management. I have check-in, check-out. And I can also add workflows. So if I look at my workflow design, then I can very easily, from a, again, from a web front end, set up some various out-of-the-box workflows or create my own workflow. So again, from this whole fire and forget type approach, I can, instead of sending it an email out and adding a tasker saying I have to follow up and, and that type of thing, I can very easily set up a, uh, a scenario where I've got a document library with these various Excel spreadsheets but I've got a workflow where I can actually check the status of each person and see whether they've um, finished their budget reports and what my status is. So as an end user, what I can do is um, here I am. I'm in my northeast district now, fiscal year 2008, in my fiscal quarters. And so here's my quota assignment for the year. Now what I can do is if I go into my pivot table tools, I can go to what if analysis, and then I enable my what if analysis, which is already enabled. And I can basically go in, and so for example, let's say my Q3 of $849,000 here, um, let's say I happen to know that in my Q3, there's going to be a lot of sales activity that's just going to drop off. So I may want to actually change this to 500000 and move that other 350,000. So I'll move that up into Q2, pull it forward. So let's make this 1.6 million. And you'll see now I actually have tags. I have a little, little red arrow down in the corner. And if I select the cell, then I'll have this little pop-up. And it'll tell me that I've changed the value. So what I've done is I've changed the value locally, but it's still the same on the server. I can actually change it back to the original data source. So now if I calculate the pivot table with change, you'll see that originally my assigned um, total was 4.7 million. If I calculate this, so I've increased my, my overall quota to 5.1 million. Um, we don't want to volunteer for quota, so let's make let's drop this down to 900,000. And so again, we'll do the calculation. 
So we originally assigned 4.7, now we have 4.9 million, um, you know, works for me type thing. Now, this is still all local. It's actually rec recalculated that based on rules, but hasn't published anything back. So now, if I want, I can come back up to my pivot table options and publish the changes. So what this does is this actually pushes the changes back to my data mart, but it's creating a parallel value. It's not actually overwriting the source data. So then if I go into my corporate budget, and we're in Northeast, so here we'll see our 4.7 million um, with our 1.1, 840,000, the original values that were published. Now if I come in and refresh it, we'll see that these values have all changed now. My 1.6, my 500,000, my 900,000, and also cascaded through, so I see a new grand total here. So if each of my districts goes in and adjusts their quota, um, adjusts their budget, adjusts whatever, then basically just by refreshing this report here, I see the effect of everything that they've done, and I can keep an eye on my bottom line and see how this is affecting everything. So, for example, if um, Northeast may pick up some additional quota, Northwest may drop some quota, um, and, and so on, then I can see, you know, what the effect on the corporate bottom line is and whether my, my overall sales quota for the company goes up or down. So we may negotiate that Northeast is going to pick up some slack for, for South Southeast based on some forecast values. Um, but we can make sure here when we come to actually publishing the budget that the numbers uh, appropriately count for each other. We end up with the same number that we went in with or, or an acceptable number as a total. So very straightforward ability, but the biggest thing, as I mentioned, is none of the data that we're working with is stored in the spreadsheet. We can, we can save this off as a spreadsheet, um, make an archival copy, um, retain the, co um, the connections. Uh, we have our options there. But the actual data that's being tracked is in the data mart underneath and these additional values that are published in so that we can then view, you know, what the CFO sent out, what was sent back, we can actually have various scenarios. So, for example, we can send out scenarios to all our subordinate organizations and say, give me budgets for if I give you 10% more or if you have to take a 5% hit. And simply by switching a filter, they can drop back and forth and publish back. And from the top end, I can simply view the scenarios and see what's going to happen back and forth. Then, in addition, I have all my standard Excel tools. So, for example, just looking at these numbers at a glance, um, I can kind of pick out who's high and who's low, but it becomes a lot easier to add data bars and get a visual perspective and see that the southeast is almost a quarter of what the southwest is. Um, northeast and northwest are about the same, and so on. Uh, another example might be that I can take values. Perhaps I want to insert a uh, bar chart. Oops. And so I can create a bar chart very quickly and see a breakdown, maybe filter this out. So I just want to look at one quarter. So again, with my Excel capabilities here, um, I can very easily manage and, and manipulate the number, well, not manipulate the numbers, but <laughs> manipulate my perspective of the data to get a better, get a better idea of how things may um, sort out. And within my pivot chart, of course, I have the standard um, formatting capabilities that you can see. So it's a very straightforward approach. Uh, for a very complex problem. To be able to take a, a, a corporate budget, send it out, publish it, review it at the, at the end user level, make adjustments as necessary, publish them back, and then review what's been published back at the top level.